Today, I have this standard output and high output Hurricane engines. And as you guys know in this channel, we're gonna do an MPG run. I borrowed these trucks from Larry H. Miller, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Sandy, Utah. Both of these trucks are available, Laramie, and this is gonna be a limited with the high output, which comes standard. Let's check out the MPG numbers. This is gonna be for the high output, and this is gonna be for the standard output. So you're gonna get a little bit less with the high output. And by the way, this does use premium. That standard output is gonna be regular fuel. Now let's go ahead and do a quick rev and we'll do the same for that standard output. They're not gonna probably sound any different though. has a little bit of throatiness with this high output. So we'll have to do it next with this standard output. Now, this truck for 2025 does have some drive modes we're gonna use. So right now, I am in automatic mode. It has four wheel drive auto. I don't think that 2024 they had that. If they did, I just don't remember it. So if I remember, I always forget though when it's time because there's just so much I have to do to set up for it. I will try to put it in sport mode because that should put it in full wheel drive auto and it rips. And hopefully I'll have a chance to take this truck down and put it up against a Ford. But I don't know, should I use this one or should I use a standard output? Because I wanna do four wheel drive auto for a Ford that has it standard or has it at least as an option because the last time I did it, you guys got mad at me on the Ford side but the truck didn't have auto four wheel drive. So I wasn't gonna put it in four high. You know, it was a brand new truck and obviously I'm on a highway so I don't feel comfortable doing that. So let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain and then we'll do the zero to 60. This is gonna be the high output version Hurricane. They do give you a different trim piece here. So they give you silver for the twin turbo badge right there. And then this looks like, like a carbon fiber look. 540 horsepower, 521 pound feet of torque eight speed transmission. Let's see how this truck puts that power down with that 392 rear. Here we go. 30, 60. Here we go. 2.88 seconds to 30, which is insane. Zero to 60 was almost, almost under six seconds, which would have been the fastest for sure, by far, I would say. Now, when I did the Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer, both obviously have, one has standard output, one has high output. The standard output beat the high output. That's not gonna happen this time around. I think that this truck having that zero to 60 at 6.19 seconds, is pretty good. I am shocked at how smooth this performance is. It is absolutely amazing. Why more manufacturers don't do inline six? That torque is real. Like, again, it, the truck has 540 horsepower, so I don't wanna boost it too much because that's a lot. I mean, that's almost 600 horsepower. You know, if you add a few Upgrades if you do exhaust intake tune, I mean you can easily have this truck at 600 horsepower easily Especially with a turbo charge twin turbo charge But yeah We're about 4,700 feet above elevation and we just Yeah, we just punched it like that was fast. That's what that was sport mode, too I turned it on so far. I mean, I, I have to admit to you guys Having a quiet truck is it's probably gonna be better for most people. A lot of people don't like the loud rumble from a V8. And this truck is super quiet. And as, as I've said in previous videos, Ram did not funnel in any fake noises for the inline six. So it's quiet, 
like when you get on it it's quiet when you cruise it's quiet when you start it it's quiet it's just quiet and most people are gonna probably like that better now let me show you guys the RPM because that's gonna be important as well so at about 55 miles an hour we're in eighth gear you guys see where we are in RPMs? We're like at 1800 RPMs. It just kicked down. I have to go up a little bit of a hill. But let's get up to about 65. I'm very shocked that they use lower gearing for this turbocharged, twin turbocharged engine with 540 horsepower. Like it doesn't make sense. Like why not just go with lower gear or higher gearing, excuse me? That would just make more sense because at 65 miles an hour, I mean, you're right at 2000 RPMs. So when we get up to the highway again, I'll show you guys at 75, but before I do that, we have to talk about the temperatures and the oil PSI because I wanna know if there's a difference between the two. So I'll have to do it at the same spot. So here it is. So here are all the temperatures. So coolant's at 212, transmission's at 181. Okay, oil life, oh, that's not what we need. We need oil temperature, 208, and then the oil pressure's at 21, 22 PSI at 70 miles an hour. Here are the numbers on the door. And then this is the payload at 1,331 pounds. Here's the midpoint. We're at 16.4 MPGs. We've driven five and a half miles so far. And now we're gonna go back the opposite direction. 75 miles an hour, we're like at 2,100 RPMs, as you can see there. 80. Yeah. Those are pretty high RPMs. I'm just being honest here. Now, this truck does have a driver assistance. You guys can see right there. Now, you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel. That's gonna come standard. I also wanted to show you guys, on both trucks, you're gonna have the convex on both mirrors. They're like the only truck in the half ton segment that gives you convex. I think Chevy might give you one on the passenger side, but it's just nice to have them on both sides of the truck, especially if you plan on towing a trailer. You don't really need the tow mirrors too. I think these work just as good. The one nice thing about the Limited is you do have massaging front seats and it's top and bottom cushions too. So I have it on the highest intensity and it's, it's okay. It's not bad. We just pulled back in and I'm actually really shocked by the MPG really shocked you guys see that 19.1 12.6 miles driven so really quickly that rear axle is at 140 degrees now this is different from the standard output so just keep that in mind all the way down below 260 man i would have expected more temperature out of this about 300 by the turbo 350 by the turbos and counting it's about 360 Intake, intake's about 150 degrees. Here's the rev for the standard output. Shockingly, there's a difference there. Not a big difference, there's a difference, so my humble opinion is that high output might be worth the extra coin. They might have done some differences with the intake, the exhaust. It's a little different. So just keep that in mind if you are shopping. I think that a base model Limited is better than a highly optioned out Laramie because you get those massage seats. And I mean, I think that just the overall fit and finish of the interiors is just a hair better. It's not a big difference, but there's a lot of nice subtle differences. Even the grill design is a little bit nicer. Although I do like the wheels better on the Laramie, just being honest here. But let's go ahead and discuss the powertrain, and then I'm gonna show you guys that zero to 60. Here is the standard output. You guys can see the difference in the engine cover. This is gonna have 420 horsepower and 469 pound-feet of torque. Now this one does have the same transmission, eight speed, 80 speed, 75, but this one does have a 392 rear. I forgot to look before I started the video. I meant to get a 355, but I'll redo this test at some point in the future. Here we go.
so I wish I would have looked before but I wonder if the turbos are smaller somehow on the standard output I'm willing to bet you they're not they're probably the exact same turbos but you guys saw that it shaved off 0 to 30 by a little bit not much but but enough that it would probably be noticeable that this truck would get the jump off the line compared to that high output but I think that once that truck is broken in it's gonna get faster because they're probably not giving you full boost now they don't have a boost gauge on here which is kind of shocking from them because Stellantis Ram whatever you want to call them they, they typically do give you a lot of good features but right after you got at about 40 50 miles an hour you can clearly tell that that became a horsepower race because that high output pulls and pulls and pulls and this truck you can kind of feel it ran out of steam because you know 500 or sorry, 500 420 horsepower versus 540 it's a big jump that is a big jump 120 horsepower more so there's so much sorry about that my camera got hot up there so yeah there's so much power in every gear at every rpm that yeah you're gonna want that high output if you can afford to get the limited or higher trims i mean it does kind of suck that the laramie is not available because a lot of people are probably going to go for this trim level and not having that availability kind of sucks but nevertheless that became a horsepower race real fast and i don't really have to put it up against a ford f-150 ecoboost i would probably have to put it up against a power boost because that would be a more fair race because obviously that engine even though it's a hybrid probably will perform better but zero to 60 was 6.52 which is pretty consistent i did with the rebel and the rebel did it in the sixes as well so this has better tires on it than the rebel for performance therefore it probably shaved off a little bit more in comparison but yeah i can't wait to put this up against the ford variants like this against the ecoboost and that high output against the power boost that would be a really good race now hopefully if i have a chance i have to go back to toyota i haven't been there in a while i need to go get a tundra with their hybrid was it the uh, max i forget what they call it the iforce max yeah that would be a good one against the power boost so there's a lot of videos i need to do because i i get excited about this type of stuff and seeing these numbers yeah makes a big difference now i will admit to you guys sadly i did not look at the window sticker to see what axle ratio this truck had i hope it doesn't have a 392 because that would kind of suck i wanted to do it without the 392 but i did not look at this one so i'll have to put it here in the video because i have not checked it so yeah i'm really happy with the performance on this truck and i think most people would be happy and i'm pretty sure there will be some tunes you can do to make these trucks a lot quicker but yeah you can clearly tell a big difference in the power and that's not a shocker because clearly it has a lot more horsepower than the high output here are the numbers on the door for the laramie and payload is 1616 pounds we are at the midpoint right now and so i don't remember where we were for the high output there's just so many numbers running in my head right now <laughs> but yeah i think we were at five and a half miles at this point but we're at 18 mpg we might have been somewhere in the neighborhood of that with that truck so yeah not bad 18.2 at the stop and this truck does have the stop start but it may not kick on because it's hot it's 93 degrees which is why i don't really use my gopro in the summertime because it just gets too hot on that windshield so yeah i have to figure out something with my audio i don't want to use a bluetooth audio either like i'm sorry i hate those things i've done it a couple times and i actually returned the ones i had but let's go ahead and head back the opposite direction and i'll show you guys the rpms without even looking at the window sticker yet we're probably at a 355 because we're at 1500 rpms because both trucks have the same tire size so if i get up to 65 now notice how i'm accelerating the truck doesn't downshift at six. Oh, I'm not supposed to be going 70. I'm supposed to be going 65. Sorry about that. So at 65, we're right at 1900 RPMs. I want to say we were close to that 
I don't actually, actually I don't remember now. I, I I have to start writing this stuff down on paper before I do the next test because I'd always forget. But at 65, yeah, I, this truck might have a 392. Actually, I don't know. We'll see. Well, you guys already know right now. I don't know yet. So once we get up to 75, maybe that'll be my other factor. But at 55, it seems like it's the 355 axle ratio. But they do have an option to get the 392 on the standard output. And that could be another test for me to do too, doing the zero to 60 with the 355 and 392. That might be good as well. So you guys see the temperatures. Transmission is about 178 and 170. Oh, there it is, 180. So they're about the same there. But the oil pressure seems to be, uh, it's the same. All of it is all in the same, basically on both. But one thing I will tell you is this truck does not utilize seventh gear or does not need seventh gear as much as that high output engine does. That is interesting. But we are at 75 miles an hour, just under what looks to be, what is that, 2200 RPMs maybe? 220, 250? And then at 80 miles an hour. The boost kicks on to even at these lower accelerations to yeah, we're at 2250, so there you have it. Either way you go, you can't go wrong. I think the standard output is more than enough power for most people. The high output just makes it more fun, that's all. If, if someone in the Ford wants to race you, they're gonna get the feelings for it real fast. So here's where we stopped at, 12.7, 20.7 MPG. So definitely here, this truck wins on the MPG, which is not really a shocker when you see the numbers on the sticker. Now this truck does have a higher temperature on that axle at 149, so them having different axles, it's possible that that one has better cooling. Down below, 280 degrees, and then turbo right there. Hmm. Did I just see 300? Sometimes it jumps around. Yeah, I saw 300 on there. And then intake over here, 142 degrees. You know, this worked out perfectly. I was hoping to get a 355 axle ratio standard output against this truck, but both of these trucks having the 392, one being standard output and high output, this actually worked out better in my favor because in the future, it will be a lot harder to find these trucks. Typically, they come in with the standard axle ratio. And obviously, the Rebel does have the 392, but it has different tires and a lift, so it's gonna perform differently. But no one's shocked by these results. Obviously, the standard output did get better for the economy. And of course, surprising to me, the high output actually did win on the zero to 60, not the zero to 30 though. Now, with that being said, I'm wondering if they did not do a longer break-in period with this high output because of that rear axle, because on the Jeeps with the high output and standard output, they legitimately perform worse in the high output and i'm willing to bet you once you hit that 500 or a thousand miles it probably unlocks all the boost for you but i hope you guys liked the video this was pretty fun for me i love doing these types of videos because i learn a little bit every time especially looking at the rpms but the rpms were actually a little different though i think they were slightly different despite both of them having the 392 but we'll have to I guess check it out with the 355 in the future so be sure to subscribe to your channel make sure your bell notification are on See you guys soon.